the sun. What's up? What's happening? It's your host, Trim Hef, the Rare Argoon, and this is episode 11 of Coachella Talk Radio, presented by Palm Springs Grip, and I have the pleasure of interviewing a friend of mine. Yes. And a fellow creative, fine artist, designer. Anything else? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, yeah. like that's, those are the focus points, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sophia Enriquez. So, when did you start painting? Was it like when you were young, a child? Um, I mean, I was like drawing and sketching all the time as a kid, and uh -huh. just like always trying to like make a mess and make things yeah. um, but I started painting like kind of how I paint now when I was like 12 uh -huh. um, around like seventh grade a very emotional time for me uh -huh. you know <laughs> bodies changing yeah. a lot of stuff's happening at home and uh, I used it to deal with life mm -hmm. just deal with my problems and how to talk about it okay. yeah so did, did you think from that point you were going to be doing something artistic for the rest of your life um, I think so because it felt really good when I was doing it. Yeah. So I was like, I want to keep this feeling, you know, yeah. I want to keep doing this and, you know, and it, and it was a plus that other people that would see my work were like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. You should keep doing this. And yeah. I'm like, all right, yeah. let's do it. That's what, that's what keeps you going, them A's yeah. and then people in your class being like, Yo, yeah, you're good at this. Just like support, yeah. you know. Yep. I also seen, I have a very similar picture at my house, a picture of you. In the AOASO soccer jersey. Yeah. So, what was your? <laughs> did you like soccer before you liked um, art and everything? Uh, it's funny because like I would draw myself playing soccer. And damn. Yeah. Me too. I did the same. Yeah, thing. like jerseys, my hair, yeah. like just like the team, like the experience and stuff. I'd always be drawing. Like they're always like really bad pencil drawings with like highlighters to uh, color it in. Yeah. You know what yep. I mean? Like yep. not that cute, but like I was just really into like uh, like writing down my like memories mm -hmm. you know like i always had like a diary and like for me the diary is a sketchbook now okay same thing that's how you get like all your ideas and everything out is like through the sketchbook yeah gotta write it down first i feel you yeah that's a very smart you know because everything's moving so fast nowadays yeah. you just gotta yeah gotta, the things that that stick out write them down mm -hmm. keep it moving yeah you think like you've taken any principles that you learned from soccer into like your entrepreneurial Grown up. Oh my time? god, yes. I played right forward. Okay, I was so, about to ask you that. Yeah, okay, I cool. played right forward. I was always trying to shoot goals. Uh -huh. Just kicking the ball. My job was to make a goal. Yeah. So, like, now that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to score goals. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I played the exact same position. So, really? Yeah. And people, yeah. all younger people, always ask me, like, um, advice and stuff like that and I always tell them like a lot of sports that I played including soccer most importantly are like just developing team skills and knowing how to communicate with a lot of people oh yeah and knowing your role and being accountable like that transpires very well into mm -hmm. like your grown-up life for sure because yeah. you're like like relying on like the forward is tight because you get to score the goals but you wouldn't get the ball if you didn't have all those other people behind exactly. you exactly you know what i mean yep. like everyone's position is like critical and like how you get the ball and like you're just like ending it for someone yeah. you know and that's it yeah and like i just i don't know like i just always felt really like pleased to like be on the same like wavelength as like other players, mm -hmm. you know? Cause like that, but playing soccer is like, that's like, you can use that in any job. Yeah. Like we're all doing the same stuff. We're all trying to get to the same goal. So yeah, yeah it feels good. So what about um, fashion? When did you get into fashion? Oh, probably when I got my first like doll set. <laughs> uh, damn, so was that like five, six? Yeah, wow. yeah. Cause uh, you know, I'd get like a doll or something or you know, like whatever, whatever I could like find. And um, you know, I didn't really like the clothes they had. Mm -hmm. So I would like cut their hair and color it <laughs> and like gut, get like old shirts that I had and like cut them and then like sew them onto them. So then I would like make them look, they didn't, I mean, they didn't look great, but yeah. like they had cool, weird like outfits. Yeah. So from there, like I just started kind of doing that. Like I, one day, like one day it was like six, sixth grade, seventh grade. Yeah. Um, I started like put like laying down on fabric and then drawing my outline uh -huh. and then start cutting like pieces. Wow. And that's how I started making like little things. So you think fashion came before? art as far as like it's, it was the same time same time yeah okay yeah Dang, that's crazy i didn't yeah. know it was that 
that yeah. early. Yeah. Because most people, it's usually like maybe the end of high school or maybe when you're out of high school and you got a little bit of freedom to kind of figure out who you are. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been trying to figure out who I am since I was a kid. Yeah. So, but, like... <laughs> the same things are always, like, calling you and pushing you in, in a particular direction. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. the, the name Mucho and... Uh, like I guess your trademark is like the woman's face, right? Mm -hmm. And like the paisley, or just a face? Just a face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did you come up with that? Um, I didn't really come up with it. I just got inspired by a bunch of art I saw at like different museums and different art books, and like the the kind of style that I'm doing mm -hmm. is like something I saw a lot in like ancient Egypt and okay. like Greek mythology and like yeah. sculptures. They all had a really like long nose like simple eye like simple like shaped like features uh -huh. it's almost like timeless yeah you know yeah. so i wanted to find something that could like bring that old school tradition to like how can i use it now yeah so i didn't invent it yeah. you know what i mean i just put your put your own yeah exactly on something that's already exactly been that's what being inspired means yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. yeah so when did you when do you feel like you uh, created your clothing line like what was the first piece that you did when you were like all right i'm gonna start doing this too oh um i don't know i think maybe like i mean i had been making stuff forever mm -hmm. like for a long time but then i think in college is um after college i was like i have so much like stuff that i've been like making and then i just started like uh slinging it on depop yeah and i started just like selling stuff and like little things i'd make and then i was like selling a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and I kept getting hit up hey can you do that again or hey can you make this one more time and I'm like no <laughs> you only get like there's only one yeah. you got to get on it yeah. you know what I mean that's like tight. yeah like there's only one piece and like from there that's kind of how it developed into like into what it is it's yeah. like a special just one piece that you're gonna get yeah you know because yeah, I take it, yeah I take it serious as art uh -huh. it's very like curated and you can see that, like, the way people gravitate towards it, they know it's, like, an art piece, opposed mm -hmm. to just being, like, some some clothing that you're coming out with. Mm -hmm. It's, like, they feel like this is theirs, mm -hmm. and you kind of, like, made it for them. You yeah, know? for sure. Because you paint on everything, right? Have you done any screen printing or anything? Um, I did screen printing in college, and uh -huh. I was learning about it, but I didn't, like, I didn't, it didn't make me feel that connected to the piece. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which is great. You know, like a lot of, I think it works for a lot of other art, mm -hmm. you know, like reasons. But like, for me, I'm just like, I want this to be like meaningful. Like, I want to build a relationship with this piece. Mm -hmm. And like, how I do that is by painting on it. I feel you. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think that you're going to ever get into that? Or are you trying to keep it like as artistic as possible? Uh, I don't know. Uh -huh. It's hard to tell right now. I think it's still early to start committing to specific things. Yeah. I feel like um, I'm always open to like learning about how my art can like go into other places. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Like, it's just, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Who knows? Uh what if it'll be really good? Printed, but yeah, it w I I feel like any way you want to go, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna work out. Yeah, exactly. But the uh, painting wise, like I know, like personally, people just feel like more connected. Mm -hmm. uh, some painting that I do on my art or mm -hmm. things that I do personalized, people will pay way more for. It exactly. Just because they know, like this is this is this mine. Is this is yours. special. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, if anybody tries to take it from me, I'm gonna be after them. <laughs> All that. Yeah, for sure. So what about the paisley print? Um, so the Paisley print, um, it's really weird. Like I, I kind of like saw this piece or this print in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't invent it. It's ancient. It's really, really old. It comes mm -hmm. from Iran. You know what I mean? Okay. And like, but the way it's been a part of my life and my culture is like through my family. And like, I noticed it, like my dad would wear it when he would be like, you know, doing the gardening or like. Um, my mom would wear it, like, we just, like, dust stuff off the house, like, just people I know wear them, like, cowboys wear them, you know what I mean, dogs wear them, it's just, like, a random thing mm -hmm. that I just saw, and then when I would be out and about, you know, like, cleaning houses with my mom, like, we'd, I would see that print there, too, in, like, really nice houses, and I was just, like, this is interesting, yeah. like, why, like, like, there's a lot of difference between us as people, but there's, like, there's some there's some similarities there. Yeah. And for me, it's just, like, a symbol, mm -hmm. you know. It could be a nothing to somebody. Yeah. But to me, I found, like, meaning in it. Yeah. You know, and it's just, like, a, it's, like, a moving shape. 
it, it, you kind of look at it, it's like yeah. an organism almost. Like the it's way like it an looks. amoeba. Yeah, like yeah. an amoeba. You look yeah. at it under a microscope. That's exactly what it looks yeah. like. So you had those featured in Coachella this year, yeah. right? And they all had different names. Mm -hmm. Well, for people that are maybe listening, she had gigantic paisley pieces. Yeah. How tall were some of them? The tallest one was 22 feet. Damn. Yeah. How much work went into this? Like, what is the process of this? Because when I seen you on the flyer, I was like, dang, I wonder what she's doing. <laughs> I seen that, I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. This is some whole, this is this took like months and months to do. <laughs> Actually, um, it took a few, uh, it took a couple months to design. Mm -hmm. It took me like two months to be like, this is what we're doing. Okay. How can we like mold it, right? Uh -huh. It took one month to make everything. Wow. So how many people were like a part of the... We the had about, we had about five or six carpenters. Okay. Um, two painters, uh -huh. myself and, and another. And it w I mean, I had a, a few other people like that would come and help paint once in a while when they weren't like busy doing other stuff. Um, but yeah, and we just like busted it out in a month, everything. Damn. It's crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. Because they're huge, you know, and they take up like a large piece <laughs> of the of the middle of Coachella. Yeah. When you're walking through them. Yeah. Did you ha also have the idea when you were coming up with them that you're going to have like the little fashion show aesthetic attached to it? I, I wanted, it was weird because like at first I was like, okay, we're just going to do the Paisleys, right? And then like, but for me, like whenever I go to Coachella, mm -hmm. I plan out my outfits. Okay. I don't know about anyone else, I but... Too. Right? Okay. It's, you're there, there's a lot of people there, you want to present yourself however you want, you know, people can take it however they want, but for me it's important, fashion's important. Yeah. So I was like, okay, why don't I make a bunch of, I want to make this for me, and I was like, wait, 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 what if I like had people wearing my clothes so then I don't just have to like be the only one, yeah. so you know what I mean? I and then I just like, you know, brought people that I know and I just dress them. I'm like, can I just like be, can you just be like my doll for like a few <laughs> hours, <laughs> you know? Yep. And uh, they were down and I dressed them up and, and I think people like understood what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, when I first dropped off the models to like walk around, it was like my friend, uh, my friends, Mary and Todd, they were like, I was like, just walk around and you don't have to pay attention to anyone. Just like do your thing waltz like this is your place this is where you live right now like yeah. this is your palace <laughs> you know like just walk around like and while they were walking around i was listening to the people at the festival they were like who oh, are they are they famous yeah. you know like what what's what's happening yeah. why are they there and i'm like i love that because mm -hmm. that's what fashion's for yep. they didn't do anything they just walked around and they the people just felt like wow yeah like oh, too much swag going on like, who are these people <laughs> Who are these celebrities? Yeah, celebrities. Yep. You know, all of a sudden it's like a hierarchy. Yep. You know, and it's just fashion. That's what your clothes do for people. Yeah. <laughs> Some people have that special touch. Yeah. You know yeah. Maybe maybe Walmart doesn't. <laughs> well, you'd be does. surprised. You'd be surprised. I'd be wearing Walmart too. Yeah. I'm on, the, on the low. <laughs> I'm not even going. Front. Where do you think these socks came from? Like, <laughs> I'm not even going front. I yeah. wear a little bit of Walmart too. Yeah. A, little, a couple of shorts here. For sure. Little little socks there for sure. So when was your first Coachella? Oh, I was in high school, junior really? junior year, sophomore year, no junior year, I think so. Okay, that was camping Whoa. out tents. No, I didn't camp because I was too little. I was in high school. Oh, like, yeah. I, <laughs> True that. um, like it was like a miracle that I was allowed to go out. You know, so like when I was like, uh, oh, please, can I go to this thing? Like, it looks really cool. I like bought a ticket from my uh, sister's friend on MySpace, uh -huh. random, and like uh, I went. MySpace. Dude, MySpace, remember? MySpace comes up like every other episode. No, -uh. <laughs> yeah. that's tight. Uh, so it was a part of the culture as a teenager, you know? That's mm -hmm. how we talked to each other. And like, I w got the ticket, I went in, and then after that, I just like kept going over and over and over again. Found a way, mm -hmm. you know, and it was great. How many times do you think you went before this time where you had your installation? I had, a go this is my 10th year going. 10th year. Yeah. So, and you were going both weekends for a lot of the time soon? Well, the last five, four years I went both weekends because I was working with the Coachella Valley art scene, Damn. doing like the arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. And I got involved like working with the festival too. So yeah. I just like liked it so much that I'm like, how can I like really be a part of this, you know? Mm -hmm. But the years before that, I would just go one weekend. Okay. Yeah. So you've been to 
nearly 20 Coachellas, 15 maybe. Yeah. That's deep. It's a lot. That's deep. See what it takes. <laughs> You see what it takes to, to, to start building installations, you got to put in the work. Like, yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of younger people don't know, you know, like the grind, you know, especially oh, yeah. from an artist's perspective, you know, yeah. everybody has a different uh, ways they go and things that they do and just a different work ethic, you know? For sure. And like nothing's handed to you. Yeah. You know, like, no, that not for me, nothing's, ha nothing was just like, here you go, you get this. Yeah. Me you neither. know? Like, so, like, I think I learned a lot about just, like, working really hard and, like, staying focused on, like, what I want to do. And then, like, the rest just kind of, like, it works itself out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yes, I have a goal and, yes, I'm trying to do this. But, like, if I have, like, good intentions and, like, you know, people are just going to be like, hey, like, let me help you out. Yeah. Or, like, let me do this for you. Or, or what can I do for other people? Yep. You know? And then it comes back around. Mm hmm and Then you might have to do something for somebody else, and it comes back around. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's the, the, beauty, the beauty in the universe. Mm hmm So you do also teach mm -hmm. um, young girls? Yeah. So um, I was teaching for the YMCA ACES program for, like, five years. Uh-huh. Um, and that's kind of just what I was doing for a really long time. I actually just like ended my teaching. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, not, not to say I'm never going to teach again. I probably will just because I love it so much. But yeah, I, I was teaching the ACES program and I did this, uh, I had this art program called Create and Destroy uh -huh. where I would like come to 25 different sites uh, for the Palm Springs Unified School District and just like make art with kids, okay. you know, and like, like, kids don't really make that much art sometimes. They're yeah. kind of not doing that in school that much. Nah, like, at technology all. Technology kind of changed a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, so whenever I show up, like, they know what's good. Yeah. They know what's going to happen. They're yeah. like, we're going to get messy. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to, like, break stuff. We're going to, like, glue stuff. We're going to, like, oh, my God. What? Oh, my God, Miss Sophia, I burned my finger with the hot glue gun. I'm like, it's okay, but it's okay. Like, you're going to be okay. Just yeah. keep working. Be yep. careful. Be aware of your surroundings. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, like... These kids make really cool stuff, yeah. you know, and they get to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. They get to talk about why they're doing this, mm -hmm. you know, and like, I don't know, when I was a teenager, like that didn't happen. Yeah. Get you to ex know? explore your creative side a little bit. Yeah. Without judgment, yeah. without feeling like it's right or wrong, mm -hmm. just do it. How much did you like that in comparison to actually creating art? Um, I think I needed to do that to make art. Because all the stuff I was telling kids to do, I was really just trying to tell myself to do that too. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, don't be scared. It's okay. You're gonna be okay. Like, just just keep making. Don't worry about what other people are gonna say. Yeah. Don't worry about if it's ugly or cute or whatever. Like, I'm not grading you on this. Yeah. I just want to see what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And then when I would be making my own stuff, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's so tight. Yeah. Cause that's the best position to be in as a teacher when you're not actually even like grading them or anything you're just there to like propel them a little bit and be creative yeah because i feel like they'll probably feel a little more safe with you opposed to mm -hmm. being you know actually judged and ridiculed for the art yeah for sure yeah, yeah. and it's always like funny because like kids are like hilarious too they have like the funniest sense of humor and like sometimes they're going through stuff and they don't know how to talk about it mm -hmm. you know like the last piece i did was like they made their own version of uh their own paisley okay. and like middle school it popped off they were just like they got deep dude i was like make a paisley that represents you your personality right now and mm -hmm. what you're going through and kids were like yo, like, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, like, these are all my layers, and this is my core, and I, I don't know how to deal with it. And Damn. I'm just like, whoa, like, where did that come from? You Damn. know what I mean? Like, That's art. That's art, dude. Yeah. And it's just simple. Yeah, I feel like maybe a lot of kids don't understand that art is even that, you know, just, like, getting inside yourself and just, like, just expressing it. Mm -hmm. You know, they might just think, man, I don't know how to paint, man. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make, draw somebody. It's, like, not really about that. Yeah. And teaching them that is very, very dope. Yeah. So where do you like to um, create the most? Because I see you traveling a lot. I've <laughs> seen you in Tokyo. I haven't seen you a few places. Where do you like to create the most? Um, well, right now I'm actually working uh, in a studio with Ryan Campbell. Uh -huh. And uh, that's right now that's, like, my my place my sacred place to create okay because i'm just like using space uh -huh. you know what i mean like space is such a luxury it is you're right especially it's, in california in california yeah. it is the most precious thing like besides water <laughs> it's just like oh my god i have space to just be yeah, in here. Yeah. like it feels amazing you know like i i love that sort of like limitless feeling mm -hmm. um so i'm working there right now but 
my the but the places that bring me the most joy is painting outside on walls mm -hmm. like i don't think i've ever been happier when i'm doing that i've seen a lot of murals <laughs> as you did yeah a lot of um spots in like um like on the walls and restaurants overseas mm -hmm. what was your favorite country to visit mm, i think paris Okay. Yeah, like when I was in when I was when I went to France, I went I went to uh, I just went straight to Paris and I like went all over and I got to paint on all these different places and it was really funny because like I almost felt like invincible. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm not I don't live here, so I can't get in trouble, <laughs> which is like not true. I could totally like it's still illegal, but like. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that mindset when you're from America and you go over there, you feel that way. But yes, it's definitely still true. There's still See, consequences. There will be consequences. Yes. You get, you get a little too deep, a little too dirty. Yeah, but I mean, I was very safe. I like hung out with local painters. I like was trying to be like respectful of the environment. And, you know, and then um, I ended up going to like, I was just hanging out by where I was staying and I was just like chilling outside, like mm -hmm. smoking a cigarette. And some guy's like, hey, I like your painted jacket. I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm a painter. He's like, cool. What do you paint? like this and i showed him my phone he's like oh do you want to paint my wall i was like yeah. uh sure yeah. so i like the next day i got some paint painted the wall and that's was, dope yeah so like i was like that was, that was easy that's, <laughs> dope. that's literally a, a artist from america going to another country and just yeah the people gravitate towards you yeah and then it's, it doesn't hurt to ask either you know like, does not no so what's up next for you um i'm just kind of working on creating as much like work as possible right now mm -hmm. you know I, I finished Coachella and I'm like stoked because it took me you know a, a while to create these pieces because I wasn't just making my pieces I was also helping install the other art okay. work so yeah. I was like helping create like the Francis Care pieces and like welding and, and stuff like that for about four months um, so I was really focused on like the process of making other people's artwork and mine mm -hmm. but now i'm like all right like i just want to like use the time to like make as much stuff and like you know have a solo show in the future and take my art to other places you know i like that yeah, yeah. so where can people like stay in touch with what you're doing um probably on instagram. instagram instagram's like the way to like communicate with me or just on my website sophiaenriquez.com and sophiaenriquez.com mm -hmm. at sophia enriquez right mm -hmm. sophia with an f sophia with an f not the ph not the ph not yeah, the ph no and then um no twitter no twitter i, don't, I had one and i got over it i feel you yeah <laughs> Not every, not every, not everybody needs it. No, it's a lot. It's just a lot of, it's just a lot of curation of a lot of BS going. It's a lot of talking, a lot and of talking. I just paint. Yeah, I don't do that much talking. What about the debop? Yeah, I just started selling on my website. Okay. Yeah. Touche. More custom pieces like yep. that. So that's what we can expect from one of my talented friends. I'm glad I got to talk to one of my friends. I didn't know a lot yeah. of a lot of this stuff that really? I actually said, nope. Yeah, no, we usually just talk about other random weird <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, we do. We got, got to talk about art, soccer, yeah, swag, fashion, yep. everything under the sun. Great talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much. This was episode 11 yep. of Palms of Coachella Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> talk Radio <laughs> by Palm Springs Grip. And this is... My so, friend, the creative, the yeah. artist, the fashion designer, Sophia Enriquez. Thank you so much.